Hey guys, welcome back to the Jones Zone. And uh, today I just want to take the time to address uh, what I call the Trinity misconception in my last video. I want to kind of go over that and, you know, honestly fix what I think was a mistake. All right, I went to the Bible, I started reading, and uh, it's been a little while since I've actually, you know, actually taken some time to go through and review uh, the Bible. Okay, so as some of you might know, the Bible doesn't actually mention the word Trinity, you know, but it does allude to the three persons, if you will, of, of God and Christ's uh, likeness to God. And we're going to get into that, starting with John 5, uh, verse 21. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. Okay. So, this is basically saying, I mean, it's telling you that Jesus, the Son, possesses the same powers of resurrection as God the Almighty. Okay? So, the Father, God the Almighty, can raise the dead at will. So, too, can His Son, guys. All right, now, let's go to verse 22. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment Onto the Son of Man. Okay, so what does this mean? I'm going to give you the interpretation of this, and it's quite simple. By committed, I think they mean transfer. That's what they mean to say. Okay. So, what this is saying is, God the Father has transferred the authority to judge to His Son, Lord Jesus Okay, and there is further evidence for Jesus' inheritance, which is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, where it says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times passed unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world's. Okay, so during feudalist times, you would have a lord who owns a plot of land. Sometimes it's a huge plot of land, depending on how wealthy the lord is. And he would have horses, uh, you know, ranches, granaries, things like that. Okay, and when the lord, you know, he would have a child, a son, he would have that. That would be his heir apparent. And when the lord would pass on, that heir a parent would become the Lord, would inherit all those things. Okay? So, that's exactly how it is with Jesus. He would inherit the land, the property. He would inherit all things that belong to God. And so, He is the Lord. He is God. All right? I know it's hard for a lot of people to swallow. It's hard for me to swallow too. You know, you know, Satan really gets in there and likes to cause confusion and use logic and all this kind of stuff. You know, so but this is this is it's clearly written here, people. Okay, so next we are going to get into the origin of Christ. This should have been the beginning, but we, we're going to um, finish it off with the cream of the Bible. So now we're going to turn to John chapter one, where it says, "In the beginning was the Word." And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made through Him, not by Him. Through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. Okay, now verse 4. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Alright, so what does this mean, people? I'm going to tell you what it means. It means that God and the Word were together at the beginning of creation. And when it says, the Word was with, with means accompanied. But with may also mean to possess. It can be both in this situation. I'm going to tell you why. And then it says, the word was God. Okay? So God is being accompanied by God. Oh my God. So that means God is the word and the word is God simultaneously. 
And through the word, God is creating the world, people. Now, when it says he was in the beginning with God, who is he? Who is he they're talking about? Let's turn to John chapter 1, verse 14, where it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The he that they're talking about? is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is also God. Jesus is the Word, which is confirmed in John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay? And for all those who keep saying, there's no Trinity, well, as I just showed you, John 5, 7 confirms all three persons so there you have it, people, all right? There, there is a trinity, okay? God does have the ability to manifest three parts into a whole that is one God, okay? And for you to deny that, someone who has received the word or has seen the word, given the word, and, and to deny that, when it is clearly written here, Man, that's playing with eternity and, and, and stuff like that. And I don't play those kind of games. You know, this is eternity that we're talking about here. And this is God Almighty. And, that he, you know, when we're talking about eternity and, and when the, the Spirit is very present in this world and wants to be have a relationship with all things and then you deny that, man, oh my God, man. You know, I just confess with the mouth, okay, that the Lord is Savior, Jesus Christ Lord and Savior.